Dr. James Schrader and I'm here at the Iowa State University compost facility where we have set up six compost uh, systems that are the size that a homeowner would use. Um, we are evaluating the compostability of over 20 bioplastic materials that we're using in bioplastic container cropping systems. As you can see we have the uh, samples in a uh, non-degradable petroleum-based mesh bag so that we can keep track of those. And this is actually two weeks into the into the trial and we're seeing some impressive degradation already at two weeks. Uh, the very first day that we set up the, the compost heaps, uh, this, the second day that they went up to 160 degrees Fahrenheit and then dropped down to about 80 so we think that the first bloom of organisms uh, was reduced and then they slowly built up to over 140 degrees each uh, Fahrenheit each uh, and we're at that temperature about two days ago so now at two weeks total we're turning the piles and um, I'm going to have Kenny give you his impression of some of these materials. Okay, my name is Kenny McCabe and I'm a research associate at Iowa State University and here we've got uh, some pieces from two weeks in a compost heap. Um, what I'm going to do is just go through a few of the different material types and give a general impression of the way they are at this state. And like I said, this is two weeks into degradation, so not very long. Um, one of the first ones that's kind of interesting is the terra shell. Uh, you can see fungal growth on the material itself, but a lot of the corners and the whole piece more or less is really brittle and can actually break into little pieces. So that's kind of neat, it's very brittle. Uh, this piece here is straight PLA. Uh, you can tell it's got a cloudy appearance. Uh, when it's first put in the pile, it was actually totally clear. You could not see that at all. And I'm not going to break it, but it's, it's also quite brittle as well. You could basically just snap it. Uh, this material here is a recycled PLA that's been molded into a commercially available uh, container mold. And this is almost uh, a little bit more brittle than the, uh, than the straight PLA. Again here you can basically just snap it into little pieces, but I'm not going to do that just because we want to maintain integrity. So this material here is uh, PLA compounded with soy plastic at 50% each. And as you can tell, uh, it basically just crumbles apart into little pieces, uh, almost granular type pieces. So if this was actually turned in a pile, you would, probably wouldn't even be able to see it anymore. This one here is uh, the same PLA soy uh, plastic compounds, but this one's mixed at 67% PLA and 33% soy. And again, the material is very brittle, just breaks apart and you can see all kinds of fungal growth all over the surface. And this is another PLA soy type, but with an added 10% uh, DDGs. Um, really, there's not a whole lot left here. Again, fungal growth over the whole material piece. Uh, and again, just falls into little granular chunks. This is PLA mixed with, or compounded with lignin. Um, it's pretty much just as brittle as the straight PLA but it looks like it might be a little bit more there is some fungal growth on the surface uh, but not quite as far along as some of the others this is a uh, mixture of PLA with bioresin from Laurel Biocomposites um, it's not quite as far along as the PLA soy types but it it does basically just break down similar to both of those in kind of a granular form. Again, fungal growth all over the entire surface. And this is PLA with bioresin at 30 percent, so a little bit further along. Um, and again, just breaks down into little pieces. This is another PLA composite. This one has got uh, 10 percent corn stover in it. Um, definitely a lot further along than the 100 percent fungal growth over the whole surface and there's a few spots where it's cracked um, pretty much similar to some of the soy mixtures and in the, in the fact that it you know wants to break down into granular pieces 
This right here is a mixture of PHA with DDGs. Uh, the DDGs are incorporated at 20%. Uh, it's not quite as far along as we were thinking it was going to be, but uh, you know it's still got a little flexibility, but it definitely is breaking down. Uh, you can see microbial growth over the whole surface. And here's another really interesting one. This is PLA with DDGs at 20%. Uh, again, microbial growth over the whole surface, and basically the piece just cracks into a bunch of small chunks. Um, so this is definitely a, an improvement over the 100% PLA. Uh, another interesting thing we noted was uh, the paper fiber containers. Uh, this one is uncoated. It's not quite as degraded as we were thinking it was going to be. You can see microbial growth on it, but overall it's still quite intact. Um, so it's something to note. And both the coated types, this is uh, one polyurethane coat and two, uh, they basically both look like they're still kind of new more or less. There's a little bit of growth on the surface, but overall they did not degrade as much as we were thinking they were going to. Okay, so that was the way things looked only after two weeks. We're going to be turning the piles every two weeks, so we'll take another video. Uh, after four weeks, we're, we're suspecting that several of these may be completely gone by then.